Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. I've spent quite a bit of time recently on the website called Gateway to Astronaut Photography of Earth, where I've been looking through many of the photographs and time lapses from onboard the International Space Station for some of my recent videos tackling the idea of flat Earth such as the video a few weeks back which looked at the camera raw files from the ISS, or the very recent video which used those images to calculate the altitude of the ISS, both of which are linked down below. But lots of people still are claiming though that these time lapses could just be fake CGI renderings. I'll tell you what though, the time lapses on that site have been coming through thick and fast recently, 15 time lapses in a 4 day period in August in fact. That is a hell of a lot of CGI work to do. Although I do keep hoping to see a good time lapse of the UK, but, you know, UK isn't really known for its good weather. All the time lapses I've seen so far seem to be when the UK is under a load of cloud. Sometimes I just think it would be handy if I lived somewhere else, but obviously that's not really practical. It's not like I can just click my fingers and jump to a different country. Although with Atlas VPN, you can just click this button and make people think you're in a different country. Doing so makes it much harder for unwanting eyes to be able to track your online presence, especially with its built-in tracker blocker, as well as its breach scanner tool to ensure that none of your passwords have been compromised. Best of all is it lets you choose which country you want to appear as though you're in, which is handy because certain websites will customise what version of the site you see based on where they think you are, so changing the country can change the website that you're able to view. And with just one account, you can install Atlas VPN on as many devices around the home as you like, so you can help keep your whole family safe. And right now, if you sign up using my link in the description, you can not only receive a massive 85% off the regular price, but you'll also get an extra three months absolutely free, and all with a 30-day full money-back guarantee. So why not check them out today? I often joke about the UK weather, however, the weather visible in these photos can actually be a very good way of authenticating the photos themselves, because we have weather radars and satellites. Even if Flat Earthers argue that satellites aren't real and that they're just balloons, we still have records of exact cloud formations. And these records can be very easily verified, especially if you're taking a flight somewhere, because you can actually film a view of the clouds from flying above them, and then cross-reference those against the weather imagery later to ensure that they match up. And this is what we're going to do with the ISS photographs. For example, here is photograph ISS 067-E-253753, which was taken during Expedition 67 on the 11th of August 2022 at 1224 GMT. It shows pretty much the entirety of the United Kingdom on the one day of the year that we actually get good weather. There are barely any clouds in view apart from a large bank of them over the north of Scotland and out into the North Sea, and then there's a small cluster of them just over the northeast tip of Northern Ireland. And if we pull up archived weather satellite imagery for that date, the closest time I could find that far back was 1pm British summertime, which is 12 o'clock GMT, so only 24 minutes before the ISS photograph was captured. And that looks a pretty damn good match. Large cloud bank coverage across the North Sea and into the Atlantic, only just hitting the northern part of Scotland and the Northern Isles, and even those small clouds there just north of Belfast above Ballycastle. Now, the ISS images don't get published on the same day that they were taken, and the nearest record I can find of this image on the Wayback Machine is saved six weeks after the capture date. So obviously people could argue that the image was posted just before the Wayback Machine capture and that it's actually just a CGI rendering, and that six weeks is plenty of time to render up a single image with accurate clouds based on weather records. So let's go one better. Here is a time lapse taken August 21st of this year. Now I downloaded these images on August 28th, which means they've been published within a week of the apparent capture date. The details show that the first image of the time lapse was captured at 9.02 GMT, having just passed over the east coast of the US during the night and heading through sunrise over the Atlantic. And the final image of the sequence 
is at 9.30 GMT having just passed over Oman and out over the Arabian Sea. So it's crossing the Atlantic Ocean, mainland Europe, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, which is over 6,500 miles, during an apparent 28 minute window. Which means the weather isn't really going to have changed much from the time from the start to the end. So we can take a single point from a weather radar as a reference. So I've taken the imagery from meteorologics.com for 10.30 British summertime, which is 9.30 GMT, the exact time that the time lapse ends. And to make it clearer, I've then taken zoomed in views for each part along the transit and stitched them together. Although for some reason, as a flat image, they wouldn't really stitch together properly. Not quite sure why that could be. Looking through the time lapse, we obviously start with just clouds and ocean. The first piece of recognisable land that we see is the coastline of France. On the right, we can see around Saint-Nazaire, down La Rochelle, and there is the Gironde estuary. And then on the left side, we have the northern coastline along the English Channel. And the weather radar shows us that at that time, along the channel was covered with cloud, and then there was a gap and then a strip of cloud hitting the coast just near La Rochelle, even matching this small group of clouds in between, as well as this rogue cloud off in the distance, while the rest of the area looks clear, which appears to be a match to the ISS time-lapse. Playing the time-lapse on, we then start to pass north of the Alps, even seeing the sunlight glistening off all the rivers in France, which all look pretty clear, but we can see some clouds to our left, which appears to be around Germany or Poland, as well as what looks like some clouds off at the far end of Italy. Again, also seems to be a match with the weather radar, which shows blocks of cloud over southern Poland and the Czech Republic, and then a cluster of clouds off the south coast of Sicily. Playing on, we now come to passing Istanbul between the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. Clouds-wise, we're seeing some odd scatterings of clouds over Eastern Europe, and then as we reach Istanbul, we see a block of cloud to the top left on the coast of the Black Sea. And once again, this seems to correlate with the weather radar. We have patches of cloud over Bulgaria, and then a strip of cloud sitting on the northeast coast of Turkey, right along the Black Sea. Playing on, we move over Turkey towards Saudi Arabia, but first we see Cyprus on our right, and there's a clear cluster of clouds looping around the island. But once again, we see exactly the same formations on the weather radar. Now as we move on over Saudi Arabia, there's a constant scattering of clouds on our left, and then off in the distance to our right, we see another group of clouds appearing. No surprises, it matches again to the weather radar, which shows clouds matching what we see on the left as being over Iran, and then a patch of clouds around Saudi Arabia. And then finally, as we get towards the end of this time lapse, we see clouds over the Arabian Sea, which also aligns with the weather radar. They kind of look shaped like a horse. Let's for fun take one of the frames from the time lapse. Let's turn it around and align it with the weather radar. Now we've got to distort it slightly to account for the fact that the time lapse is being viewed on a, a downward angle, whereas the satellite imagery is straight down. But would you look at that? It's an exact match. Now that is some incredible attention to detail by the NASA CGI department of Globe Fakery. Or alternatively, it's just photographs of Earth from the space station. Let's also bear a few other factors in mind here. Firstly, this is a time-lapse of 1,692 individual frames published less than a week after the date that the weather matches up to. Now that in itself is a stretch, to imagine that a CGI department could A, match up the weather across 6,500 miles so perfectly to begin with, B, create it and publish it so perfectly within a week, and also the fact that this is from August 21st. They had three time lapses published from August 20th, five from August 19th, four more time lapses from August 18th, and a further one from August 17th, which all would have had to have been created beforehand. So they wouldn't have actually had a week to work on it anyway. Not to mention that the weather imagery that we are referencing isn't from NASA either. It comes from Meteorologics UK, which is using satellite data from EU METSAT, which is the European Organization for the Exploration of Meteorological Satellites, 
who use their own Meteosat satellites, which are in geostationary orbit. Meteosats 9, 10, and 11. These were launched in 2005, 2012, and 2015, respectively, all from the European spaceport in French Guiana, and all launched on Ariana 5 rockets, which are European Space Agency rockets. So, no involvement from NASA anywhere there. And just to take this a step further, whilst this might be the end of this time-lapse, the next published time-lapse on the website picks up from exactly this same spot one second later and continues across the Indian Ocean into nighttime south of Australia. So it's essentially just one long time-lapse, but they've split it into two. But as the second part of the time-lapse nears its end, we have the sun behind the camera, which is reflecting light from the underside of the space station straight through the window that the camera is looking through, which is then lighting up that compartment. And we can see a clear reflection of it in the window. We can even download the raw file and raise the shadows to see the details even clearer. It then starts to drop back into darkness as the ISS hits its own sunset and it's starting to turn orange, but the hatchway to the next compartment is still being lit. And we can actually see the last few frames the astronaut comes in to stop the camera recording. Now I suspect the astronaut in question here is Sultan Al Nayadi, because if we look into the details tab for the images, they are titled Sultan Al Nayadi 1049 Day Time Lapse over UAE Part 1 and Part 2. And Sultan Al Nayadi is an astronaut from the United Arab Emirates that is part of Expedition 69, which launched back in March on SpaceX Crew 6 and came back just at the beginning of September. You know, which would fit with why he in particular might want to shoot a time lapse as it passed over his home country. In fact, we can even go one better that it's most likely Sultan Al Nayadi that's turning off the camera, because just before this, as the sunlight is beginning to reflect into the window, we see this cable on the right hand side moves as something or someone knocks into it. And if we slow it down frame by frame, we can see that this one particular frame just happens to catch a glimpse of part of a face in the light. This is image ISS 069-E-081477. And if we download the raw file for this and brighten it up, we can clearly see that this is Sultan Al Nayadi. So he was definitely in that part of the space station, most likely was the one that turned the camera off. And if we download some of the other raw files from just after this, we can see he's in that compartment for at least a few frames and looks like he gets something off the wall behind the camera. Which again is just an insane level of detail for a CGI department to go into. Not only adding the light reflecting off the space station and lighting up the room behind the camera, but also then showing an astronaut shutting off the camera and even throwing in all the details into the file of who the astronaut is. On top of creating all of these time-lapse frames with perfect weather replications in only a few days. It takes Hollywood years for CGI rendering. The opening scene of Gravity took several months, the whole film took five years, and Avatar 2 took a decade. And this is apparently from a CGI department that, according to Flat Earthers, are the most incompetent group of people on the planet who are constantly making glaringly obvious schoolboy errors. Anyway, that's going to bring this video to a close. If you've enjoyed it and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.